And last, we'll call the meeting to order and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sue, can you call the roll for us, please? Councilmember Canfield? Here. Councilmember Chambers? Here. Councilmember Phillips? Here. Councilmember Salcedo? Here. And Mayor DeVore? I'm here. I'll look for a motion now to approve the consent agenda from this. I make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll support. Okay. Discussion or changes? Sue? Councilmember Canfield? Yes. Mayor DeVore? Yes. Councilmember Salcedo? Yes. Councilmember Phillips? Yes. And Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Uh, citizen comment, items on the agenda. Curry Beecham, 920 Riverside. Uh, just want to give you an update, because uh, you're, you're starting to see Lowell turn pink. Uh, we're getting the banners up. Uh, Started today, we'll get them up uh, tomorrow and probably Wednesday morning. And I want to just uh, briefly talk about next week, Thursday is Community Day. Uh, would hope the citizens and the community would come out for that. And uh, how you can help is uh, that day um, we're uh, purchasing. That would be the first official day you can get your T-shirts, and that's the that's what. Um, uh, raises the most amount of money um, that stays in the community that helps those people that are on a uh, cancer journey or grief journey um, through Gilda's Club. Um, so get out there uh, uh, and buy those shirts. Uh, All Weather Seal, if you buy it that day, they're donating a dollar for every shirt that's uh, sold on that day, so that helps out. Um, and the other is the blood drive. We'll have uh, Michigan Bloods there, and they're in need of blood, and we hope to go over the uh, 100 pints, um, and for every pint that we do, uh, Gilda's Clubs receives $10, it's a, so it's a great thing. Also, there's uh, um, Spectrum will have their mammography bus there, and uh, you can, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there, you know, we forget about the gentleman with breast cancer, but there are, uh, that does happen. Um, but you can go and uh, get signed up for that. And if, uh, if it doesn't work um, into your budget, um, we have means of being able to support that, um, to go out and get, um, get that mammogram. So again, I ask the community and, and the businesses and the, everybody in the community to come out and support that and uh, go from there. Thank you. What time, Terry? Huh? It's going to start at uh, 10. I think it goes from 10 to 7 with the, the concert will be, uh, the um, summer concert series will be right after that. Also, it's uh, free lunch, hot dogs, and dinner on the grill. Um, so, you know, stop by, uh, get, get your dinner get your lunch and uh, there's also the, the there'll be a uh, community tent where health professionals will be there to answer questions and uh, sh to show their wares and so it's, it's just a it's just a great day on the river walk so thank you thank you anybody else oh. all right move on to old business MD. i have a old business comment just um Maybe looking for some input from other board members and Mike, but uh, council members. What can we do? I think sometimes old business kind of drops off the edge of the horizon and, and we don't get back to it. Um, updates on things, an example might be like the uh, sidewalk program. We kind of got started on that. Um, some sidewalks got painted. Um, I know there's a few of the city sidewalks that aren't fixed yet. and. Um, I'd just like to know how we're doing on that. There's some other things, but I don't know what type of mechanism we could have to help not drop the ball on things occasionally. But um, I, you know, I, I can do it any way you want. I like to have things 
where I can give you tangible information and put it back in envelope of this. I don't like to just put things on the agenda when we're not done on our end where I can really give you a detailed report on things is why I do it the way this way, but I can do it any way you want. Okay. No, I just sometimes, I don't know what other opinions are on it. It just seems to me sometimes we forget to get back to well, this. I, I, this update really yeah, FII. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Very good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. New business, item A, payment for Hudson Street, Michael. In April, the City Council approved the expenditure for the paving of Hudson Street. At the time, the estimated cost of the project was $300,000, with the City paying 50% of the total cost, or $150,000. The Council approved payment of $75,000 in fiscal year 2019 and $75,000 in fiscal year 2020. Our cost-sharing agreement with Kent County Road Commission allows us to stretch payments for two years if needed on Hudson Street. The good news is this project was approximately $88,000 less than the estimated cost. Sorry. This means the total cost to the city, uh, actually this would be a corrective, it should be a slight increase, will be $107,204.17. Since this total is approximately $43,000 less than projected, the city should consider paying the bill in full rather than delaying the payment over two fiscal cycles. Currently, this, there, there's more than adequate amount of funds in the major street fund to pay this, as that would be the fund to, to pay for this project. Um, there's currently $334,000. That doesn't include our next year's Act 51, which will also be an additional um, $75,000 from the previous year that we'll receive um, next year. Um, and uh, while, we, while we currently budget only $75,000 for this year, we can just amend that line item at a later date. And by paying this bill in full, it will close out this matter and will not be a burden to the major street fund. I recommend the Lowell City Council approve payment of the total cost of the Hudson Street repaving at a cost not to exceed $107,204.17. Okay, I had a question regarding the actual invoice. I mean, make, did you get more of a breakdown than just $107,000? Uh, this is what they gave us. This is what we got from the county. Um, the only thing that they, they forgot to add, I guess, was they didn't, I found this out after I was on, on vacation, but there was a, there was some striping work they didn't add to this bill that they forgot, so that's why we did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would be nice. I just learned that like five months ago. So. Hey, be done with it. Mm -hmm. No, it's great to have that done because that is a highly visible yeah, route that a lot of traffic takes, and I think it just improves people perception of how we're doing here. So good job on getting that done. I'll look for that motion then with the new dollar amount, 107, 204, 17. So moved. Support. Any other questions for Mike? Sue? Mayor Gore? Yes. Councilmember Salcedo? Yes. Councilmember Phillips? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. And Councilmember Canfield? Yes. All right, item B, progressive heating and cooling preventative maintenance, Michael. Um, attach your proposed maintenance agreements between the city and progressive heating, cooling, and refrigeration to provide routine service inspection and cleaning of heating and cooling equipment located at Lowell City Hall and the Englehart Library. The costs for the service are as follows. Um, for City Hall, $1,668. For the library, $1,592. This is an annual agreement and the cost does not include repairs to the system. Progressive has been providing routine repair services to the city since at least 2016. Funds for this event, um, activity are available from the City Hall contractual line item and the library contractual line item. Um, recommending that the City Council approve the preventive maintenance agreement with Progressive Heating, Cooling, and Refrigeration Incorporated located in Lowell, Michigan and authorize the Mayor and City Clerk to sign on behalf of the City Council. We discussed, didn't we, last year at one of the vision meetings about the townships pitching in funds for use, you know, maintenance and stuff at the library. Correct. Uh, and this, this is a big deal, the 1592, but if you're talking about that not including major repairs, you know, I, I just think that that's a conversation we need to re-engage in with them. Okay. And the, Community as a whole uses it, you know, right. you know, we foot the bill, and it's a pretty nice deal they got going over there. So, not related, but kind of related. Okay. So. 
I don't think we do the vision meetings in the summer, so maybe it's we do never. Yeah, so our next, school actually, starts. our next vision meeting is in two weeks, so we can talk about it. Our school starts. Yeah. yeah. Greg will be there too. Okay. Uh, I'll look for a motion then to approve, the, approve that maintenance agreement. So moved. Hustle board. Okay. Sue? Council Member Salzio? Yes. Council Member Hall? Yes. Council Member Chambers? Yes. Council Member Canfield? Yes. And Mayor DeBoer? Yes. Uh, item C, First Advantage Enterprise Screening. First Advantage Enterprise Screening Corporation provides required annual substance abuse selection and testing services for the Michigan Municipal League Commercial Drivers Licensed CEL Drug and Alcohol Testing Consortium, which Lowell is a member. The program facilitates the compliance with the federal anti-drug and alcohol abuse requirements. These requirements are applicable to employees who are required to possess a CEL as a prerequisite for employment. Uh, First Advantage's Substance Abuse Testing Service Agreement will provide compliance, selection, and testing for the six city employees who hold commercial driver's licenses. The agreement is for a 36-month period with an automatic 12-month renewal. The yearly fee paid to, this, to the Michigan Municipal League CDL Consortium is $420. Additional testing beyond routine random selection will be in accordance with the price schedule of the agreement. Uh, funds are available from the Department of Public Works contractual line item. Uh, I recommend City Council approve the Substance Abuse Testing Services Agreement with First Advantage Enterprise Screening Corporation of Atlanta, Georgia, and authorize the mayor and or city clerk to sign on behalf of the City Council. This is our DOT requirement, so this is what we're required under DOT. <coughs> yeah. Maybe the fancy little card. Everybody in the MML uses them almost, don't they? Pretty much, yeah. They're they're new. They came on a couple of years ago. There was another company. Um, um, they yeah. they were fired because they were actually um, they were actually the company was actually giving false tests. People were coming up positive, and they weren't really positive, so they were no longer involved. Okay, I'll look for that motion then to approve that agreement with them. So moved. I'll support. Okay. Any other discussion on it? Sue? Council Member Phillips? Yes. Council Member Chambers? Yes. Council Member Canfield? Yes. Mayor DeVore? Yes. Council Member Salzman? Yes. All right. Uh, board and commission reports, Greg. I was out of town for the uh, Parks and Recs meeting. Did not attend that. Uh, Lara meets uh, this week on Wednesday. Mr. Chambers? I am done. Mr. Salzweil? I have none. Mr. Phillips? I don't have anything. I don't either. Fire Authority meets Monday and uh, revision with Liz is in two weeks. That makes it your turn, Mr. Burns, manager report. Okay. Um, well, I'm back on vacation. Um, and uh, we'll, we did um, a couple things to report to the board. Um, the website, we're just in the final, we're just trying to get some Files that we, you know, that we like the public to have available to them. Upload just a couple things cleaned up on the on the uh, on the website before we launch it. One thing that is kind of holding back the launch is the um, the domain handle. Um, we are going to change the name of the website from www.ci.lowell.mi.us. We're going to change it to www.lowellmi.gov. And there's just some things we need to do. We actually have to buy that domain license from the federal government. Um, but once this I anticipate hopefully the website can be online in the next two weeks. Um, once it's online, that will be the no, new domain, and then eventually what we will do is we'll actually, while our, our email addresses will still be able to be used, we will be able to start using the new domain for our emails as well. So I'm, I'm going to be working with um, Tony and Betsy on that this week. Um, so that is, uh, that is one thing that we're working on. Um, there will be a committee of the whole meeting on the 20th of um, August. Um, we will be meeting with the chamber regarding the when they came this spring about the, um, the, the the use of the building. Also, probably going to have a discussion with you about the, new, the changes to the lead and copper roll um, for uh, for water. Something things just you need to be aware of with the new changes in the uh, policy that DEQ is going to be requiring. Um, there's some there's some there's some issues actually at the local level that um, you need to be aware of, and it's. Some of the things they're they're actually being they're actually some cities are actually considering lawsuits against the state 
um, because of some of the requirements that they're that they're looking at. So we'll we'll talk about that at the next meeting. Um, also, um, saw is still is still coming along. Um, they have um, since this summer they did some smoke testing, so they've been able to get a good assessment of the system. Also, um, they are still evaluating soil soil borings on the west end of the city to see if there's any opportunity to lower the groundwater table in that area of, of town. Um, the, the smoke testing is completed and they found some inflow locations in the east side of the city where the stormwater is infiltrating the san sanitary sewer. Um, they're still doing some evaluation, but they also have provided some statistical information on our sanitary and our storm selection that was was a lot, lot better than I had anticipated. Um, they, for the sanitary sewer, they only deemed that 13.6% of our sanitary sewer system would be deemed in bad or poor condition. And um, the amount that would be deemed average is about 14.7%. 68% of, uh, of the system is in good or excellent condition, only about 3% they couldn't figure out. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, I honestly thought it was going to be a lot worse. Um, and um, of that 13.6% that needs to be repaired, a lot of that can be spot repaired or lined. They can just put the liner in and, and that would, so there's not necessarily going to have to be a full reconstruct of that, of that portion of it. Um, I don't know exactly where all the locations are, they just that they've given us that information. Also, they have, I, have, I asked them for a preliminary assessment of the, um, of the storm sewer system. Um, they still have about 25% of the system they still need to rate, whether it's excellent, good, average, poor, worse. And um, of, of the storm, um, the, the good news there is only a, not even, really, not even 1% of the storm is, at this point, is deemed poor, or worse, um, about um, almost 70% of the storm is deemed in, in, I would say, in excellent or good condition. And, um, but I said there's also 25% that they're still they're still analyzing, but they'll have that for us pretty soon. So um, we're moving forward with that. We do we, we are we did meet with um, Williams and Works right before I went on vacation, um, and they are they are they are trying to tie in the road, the assessment, the, the, um, the, the, the road assessment, the street, the street, the street paver study to, to the plan. Um, I do anticipate the Williams Works coming and reporting to you their findings for the, for the street asset management plan probably here in the next month. Um, I'm going to ask them if they can come and at least present something to you. Um, but they're still, they're still working on that. They're still working on a, a plan that you could put together, but we are, we are moving along with that. Um, also, um, we've had some, uh, last two weeks ago we met with MDOT regarding the speed signs and the, um, and the, speed, the speed analysis that was done. It was the first speed study that was done in the city since 1988. I'm going to have Chief Bukala explain to you um, what, what occurred in that meeting. So approximately six months ago we requested the speed study from MDOT and prior to that study they had us remove and turn off our electronic speed signs. Now, be that as it may, we were able to reduce the 85th percentile speed to 24 miles an hour with those signs. Since they had been turned off and they conducted their speed study, the speeds went right back up to 28 miles an hour, so MDOT wanted to raise the downtown speed limit to 30 miles an hour. Uh, I argued with that uh, due to the walkability study with Dan Burton that uh, the higher speeds make it even more difficult to cross the street. And we had the data to prove that our signs were working and that we were able to lower the speed. So the state police actually looked at our data that we had collected over the last year and a half, and they agreed with us that the speed limit should be 25 in this corridor. However, since it has been 30 years since there's been a speed study, some of the speeds and the road conditions have changed. So you're going to see an increase in speed from 25 to 35 between Hudson and 8th Amity Street. That'll go to 35, and it'll continue to 35 to the um, area near McDonald's, so we'll go back to 45. So you won't see much of a change there. 
Uh, the biggest change is going to be between James and Grove Street. That's going to go from 45 to 50. And then it'll drop to 40 and then back down to 25 for our corridor. So it's going to be a more of a gradual step down versus an abrupt step down from 55 to uh, 45 to 35. They wanted to be consistent with the 85th percentile speed there. So with that being said, uh, the radar signs do work and they are going to allow us to put them back up when they issue the permit to put them up. We're also going to be at, because they've, they've sold their Jeep, um, they actually got a pretty good price on the Jeep, the proceeds from the sale of the Jeep are going to be used to buy um, signs on Bowles and Hudson, correct? Uh, eventually Bowles. I'm looking more of the school zones, uh, North Hudson and then possibly Foreman Street if we have enough money left over. And then I will budget for Bowles probably next year. Foreman would be a good one. Do we use, we don't use our little trailer one much. The either. speed trailer uh, is, is a 1990 or 91, I believe. And over the last few years, I've been putting more and more money into it. I'm trying to get away from putting money into that because it, it's an Office 2000 operating system. So it's an 18 year old computer system and it continues to crash. Uh, the batteries are supposed to last three to five years, and I think the, uh, the solar-powered panel is actually draining batteries, and I can't figure out why it's ruining brand new batteries. So rather than put any more money into it, I'm actually trying to get more of these little speed signs and possibly a new trailer. They won't give us anything for a trade-in on it. I already tried, but uh, eventually I would like to get a new speed trailer. Um, also, no, no meeting with MDOT wouldn't be fitting if we didn't mention the need for the left-hand turn signal at Main and Hudson, um, and they were open to it. Um, they actually put us in touch with the left-hand turn guy, <laughs> and uh, we're going we're gonna to set up a meeting with him here, hopefully, the next couple, you know, couple months. Um, but I, I think we all have to thank Chief Bukala for this, um, because they were adamant on changing the speeds to 30. We were very, we were very, um, we were very candid with them that we did not think that was acceptable, and um, but but Steve's data pro proved that those signs work, and this is kind of a this is a situation where you know maybe not, not following the protocol actually benefited us. So um, we, were, we were able to show them that local people actually know what we're talking about versus at the state level where they think they know what they're talking about. Cross the cross from the river walk. Are those new pedestrian signs they put up? Yes. yes. Now, does that mean that they have the right of way to walk across? Because I'm going to say that we go. of those people, they, <laughs> they do. And I saw a car hit the brakes pretty hard the other night just to stop from hitting something. According to the new traffic law, if the pedestrian is in that crosswalk, the vehicles are supposed to stop. Okay. The Uniform Traffic Code, which is, we actually enforce both. The Uniform Traffic Code is what, he, what Steve is referring to. The Motor Vehicle Code, clearly does not allow for um, s stopping at um, a mid-street intersection like that. Um, but in most, most police departments in the, in the state of Michigan follow the motor vehicle code. Really the one that does the uniform traffic code is the state police, but we do, it, we do adopt both. So we can, we can now enforce it because they told us that we can follow the Uniform Traffic Code, which we adopted back in the uh, mid-90s. That's good. So this kind of reverses that decision where if someone stops and another vehicle runs in the back of them, the guy that stopped won't be ticketed for stopping. If there's a pedestrian... We, we will not be ticketing them if they stop for a pedestrian, but if they stop for no other reason at all, then, then they would be competing traffic. Also, speaking of MDOT, we discussed uh, at the last meeting that the two-hour parking signs were put back up down the corridor. Um, there is a sign posted uh, pretty much right at the edge of the bridge by the Main Street Inn, which is not a parking area. There are no stripes there. They stop back about three lengths. It says two-hour parking there, which confuses people because now they're parking in front of the Main Street Inn thinking that that's a legal spot. The yellow paint has disappeared off the curb there. I'm not sure who's, you know, area of responsibility. Well, probably look at that, well, it would have that. But I just, that's kind of a, a narrowing spot sure. there yeah. with Spring Grove, but we just, you know, every once in a while somebody lands there and we 
got to figure out who it is and try to get them out there to move their car. I think some yellow paint would help with that. Okay. Yeah. That's, all, that's all I have. Aaron? Uh, we don't have anything, Sue, for appointments? No, I don't have anything. Aaron? Council comments, Mr. Canfield. Uh, the recent news, parchment with PFAS in their water um, is making Mike look more brilliant every every week goes by. Um, thank you for getting our city water tested six months ago when that first came out because there's some other people that weren't as proactive and had the foresight that you did. So thank you for letting our citizens and uh, water users know that we have good drinkable water here. That's it. Mr. Chambers. Uh, everybody show up for the 30th. It'll be a good game. I am going to Rockford tomorrow, Perry, and I'm going to go find their sign, and I'll take a picture of it, because it's like the one we got out here at the expressway, right? Correct. I'm gonna, I think theirs is the, I think theirs is the one of the electronic ones okay. that come up and you know that recycles every 45 seconds or whatever the case may be. And we have some friends that live there, and I am taking some of the posters, and uh, I'll be planting them in their yard. So, so, and again, it will be uh, Lowell versus Rockford for volleyball on the 30th, and Lowell versus Rockford for football, and I believe the soccer will be playing Northview. That's all yeah. And that's a Thursday this yep. year. Jeffrey? I'm all set, everybody have a great week. Mr. Stone. I'm good. I am also good. Back to Mr. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 727. I'll support. Motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.